Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. XRP has formed its first bullish golden cross in months. This brought to us by XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. Things are looking to be heating up in the crypto market. The XRP chart just produced its first golden cross in 15 months, which is regarded as a bull market indicator. XRP's daily moving average, the 50, uh, crossed above the moving average, the 200-day moving average, on October the 23rd, validating a price chart called a golden crossover, which is a long-term bullish indicator. And guys, you can see it down here. Uh, this is a screen grab published by you today from TradingView. And you guys can see in and around here that golden cross is forming. So historically, these are indicators that are good predictors of when a bull market is coming very soon. And uh, I mean, we can't just rely on one indicator. We got to look at the whole picture, see what else is going on here. But the golden cross has appeared a few times on the XRP chart in the past. Um, its last occurrence was on July the 17th, 2021, which was followed by a 176% price rally later with XRP topping out at $1.41 before reversing course to the downside. So that was the last time we saw it. Just bringing up XRP here real quickly on the chart. You guys can see it is continuing to form that bullish pennant pattern. And uh, I don't have the moving averages up here, but uh, it is now crossed over that moving average. What did they say? The 50s crossed over uh, the 200. Yeah, 50 crossing over the 200. So that is looking fairly bullish for XRP. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, Bitcoin has seen a little bit of upward momentum. This is also great news. Bitcoin trading right now at $20,700 per BTC. And uh, the Wolf of All Streets bringing this to our attention using Bollinger Bands, which are the tightest they have been since the year 2020. We can see that Bitcoin is forming a very rare pattern on the Bitcoin daily chart. And he states here, very, very rare. Not sure if having a breakout is a good thing or not with this particular formation. However, we are seeing um, with regards to Bollinger Bands on the Bitcoin chart, Bitcoin breaking above the Bollinger Bands for the first time. I don't have Bollinger Bands here. Here, let me just uh, throw up some quick Bollingers and let's just see what he means here. So I don't know what uh, what settings he has here. If we look up here, we can probably see, okay, BB. Uh, they're, they're at 20. So what do we have up here? We've got BB at 20. So we have the same settings. Usually when we see the Bollinger Bands are further apart, that means that there is uh, a lot of volatility in the market. And as they come closer together, that means less volatility. So when we see them break above the Bollinger Bands, as we're seeing here, you guys can see that right in here. Uh, that means likely, hopefully we are going to see an upward trend. We are going to see more volatility, right? The spread is going to be wider. There's going to be more bullish sentiment, more buyers wanting to buy Bitcoin at a higher price uh, and less sellers wanting to sell, which would indeed boost the price of Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, considering we're seeing the golden cross over on the XRP chart and we're seeing uh, Bitcoin boost above the top Bollinger Band in this case, those are two really good signs that we are seeing some positive upward momentum in the crypto market. The other thing, guys, that I wanted to bring to your attention is the US dollar currency index. And we have seen, um, you know, over the last several months now, US dollar um, gaining momentum. But now what we are witnessing, perhaps a double top for the US currency index. I mean, I think it's still too early to say for sure. However, you know, taking a look at this chart here and taking a look at this level right in here, this level of support, I guess the US dollar has to really hold that. If we do want to continue to see a strong US dollar, if we take a look at the dollar, um, you know, versus other major currencies like the euro, dollar dominance going uh, down means euro is going up. So you guys can see euro uh, rebounding back up to 1.0025 roughly. Same with the Great British Pound to the US dollar. We can see that rebound up here. Great British Pound now trading at about 1.157. So some major currencies now compared to the US dollar are going up. And I mean, it gets me also wondering, is this partially why we are seeing the Bitcoin price rise because uh, US dollar dominance is going down. So all things to consider here, guys. One thing we do know for sure though, is accumulation is happening specifically with XRP. This one from Michael Branch, whales are buying the dip, accumulating more than 200 million XRP. Although the overall value of digital currencies has been falling over the previous 90 days, Ripple's native token XRP has been one of the best performers. Positive developments in the critical long-running case between Ripple and the SEC have recently increased whales' appetite for XRP. More than 105 million XRP were added to prominent cryptocurrency wallets in the last 24 hours alone. And this was published uh, just yesterday, so that would have been from October the 24th to the 25th. 
uh, cryptocurrency wallets in the last 24 hours, according to data compiled by Whale Alert. As of right now, the total value of the XRP held by whales is estimated to be over $48.3 million. So that is also something significant to note. As the price of XRP has recently dropped, it is noteworthy that more than 205 million XRP have been transferred to various anonymous wallets. It seems that the whales have successfully bought the recent price drop. Uh, it is previously announced that cryptocurrency whales had purchased an additional 240 million XRP tokens. So realizing this lawsuit is coming to an end, realizing that now a great time to buy cryptocurrency, buying XRP in particular. I mean, I personally would have been accumulating in the summer months uh, when XRP was still in the 30s. However, 40, 45 cents, still not a bad time to purchase. So I wanted to thank Michael for that. Crypto Eddie also bringing this to our attention. DBS, the largest bank in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Well, they just announced a new development here, guys. Digital Payment Token Exchange. Welcome to the future of capital markets. And this spurred on by DBS Bank, which is a Ripple partner as well. Digital Payment Token Exchange. So DBS Digital Exchange now offers trading services between four fiat currencies and five of the more established cryptocurrencies, namely Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Polkadot, and XRP. Hong Kong dollar, uh, Japanese yen, the US dollar, and I'm assuming this is the Singapore dollar. Please note that in general, cryptocurrencies are classified as digital payment tokens under the Payment Service Act of 2019. And you guys can go down here and just see uh, the trading pairs, some of the trading pairs specifically for XRP, allowing institutional clients here to purchase XRP with all of these uh, specific fiat currencies, guys. This coming from a legitimate bank based in Asia too. So this is not just some mom and pop cryptocurrency exchange. This is a bank, a big bank, now allowing for digital payment token exchange to be one of their services. So big news there. Wanted to thank Crypto Eddie for pointing that out. This one, guys, from Mike Manfield, CBOE Japan, okay, to potentially reach additional investors and expand its presence in the Asia Pacific region. Now, these guys just signed an MOU or a memorandum of understanding with SBI Holdings, which is a large Ripple investor. Uh, so CBOE Global Markets and SBI have signed the MOU whereby they have agreed to discuss potential business collaboration opportunities in the areas of traditional and digital finance. The MOU uh, between CBOE and SBI lays the foundation for the potential exchange of resources and information with respect to pursuing cooperation and planned joint business initiatives between the two firms and equities, digital assets, and other financial products and services subject to any applicable regulatory approvals. So these guys want to team up. And they want to share knowledge, share their customer, um, I guess their, their metrics and all that to really kind of be able to fine tune the market when it comes to digital assets, equities, and other financial products and services. So this expansion sounds like it's going to be big. The MOU creates an opportunity for CBOE and its Japanese equity markets, CBOE Japan, uh, to potentially reach additional investors and expand its presence in the Asia Pacific markets uh, and for SBI to leverage CBOE's expertise in equities and digital assets in an effort to expand its offerings and global distribution network. So a few quotes here, Yoshitaka Katao, representative, director, chairman, president of SBI Holdings. He stated this, I recognize that CBOE and SBI group have a lot in common. Both led the reform of the financial industry and have aggressively entered into the field of digital finance by utilizing cutting edge technology. The chemistry between the two companies will bring about new waves of change to Japanese financial markets and promote regulatory reforms in Japan that will benefit investors in Japan, especially the retail investors. So focusing on retail and ultimately contributing to solving the long-standing social issue of shifting from savings to investment. So democratizing, it sounds like these guys are democratizing um, investment strategies for the people of Japan specifically. Basically the exact opposite of what they are doing in the United States with the SEC, um, you know, saying they're out here protecting investors. Meanwhile, at every turn, it seems like they just start doing whatever they need to do to keep their banker buddies happy and to keep them rich. So um, I'm glad to see that this is happening in Japan. Wanted to thank Mike just for posting that. Wrath of Kahneman here bringing us some news with regards to Ripple partner Al Fardan Exchange. They've announced a joint venture with Legendary Holdings, okay, coming out of Korea. And Legendary Holdings, they're a company operating uh, Korea's leading precious metal investment platform, Wingold platform. They announced a successful completion with Al Fardan Ventures, again, a Ripple partner, to launch the next generation precious metals investment platform that will redefine how investors across the MENA region transact precious metals. Al Fardan, Ripple enabled, uh, partnering up with this uh, with this group here, Legendary Holdings from Korea, to invest and be able to trade precious metals, guys. Wow, that sounds like the perfect application for the XRPL. 
Uh, the joint venture agreement formalizes the agreement reach during the Gitex Global 2022 in Dubai, UAE, where they held, uh, which they held from October 10th to October the 14th. Under the terms of the agreement, Al Fardan Ventures and LHI own the JV, though this joint venture will revolutionize and localize the Wingold platform for the MENA region to offer a one-step platform for digitized precious metals that provides direct ownership of physical precious metals, 24-7 convenient access, best-in-class user experience, and integrated financial services, and cryptocurrency support for investors in MENA. So more and more, this is sounding like they are using DLT technology. Likely RippleNet, considering one of the partners is Ripple enabled already. Convenient 24-7 access. Also integrating uh, cryptocurrency support for their investors. So it's sounding more and more like these companies really want to be at that cutting edge. Don't want to be left in the dust and want to be able to leverage uh, everything at their disposal. Considering Alfardan, uh, the, uh, the Alfardan exchange is already Ripple enabled. I mean, this would only make sense. And precious metals too, right? Exchanging anything of value. Uh, and as they mention here, the ownership of precious metals. So it's going to be real exchange, real value, 24-7 convenient access, best in class user experience. So not clunky at all, frictionless and integrated financial services and cryptocurrency support. This is what tips me off, guys, that it is going to be DLT run. So huge news here coming out of the MENA region. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for bringing that up. And so why is it that the government organizations put in place uh, to regulate this kind of stuff in the U.S. are so corrupt? Eleanor Turret bringing this up, okay. In Senator Warren's letter to financial regulators, she references the left-leaning watchdog group Tech Transparency Project, which did a report in February analyzing the number of Washington insiders now in the crypto industry. Having read the report, I think it underscores the fractured understanding of the crypto industry. So... That's the other thing. A lot of these guys don't even know what is going on and they have no interest in it. I mean, they are, a lot of them, you know, a lot of times are career politicians, uh, you know, only focused on keeping their job, only focused on saying the right thing to stay in power. Uh, and so, you know, this is what she's noticed here. For example, the report refers to Coinbase, Stellar, and Ripple as being the largest players in the industry, with Ripple being the main competitor of Coinbase Hinman is also referenced in the report, which describes him as being at the center of a court fight and media controversy over whether his ties to the crypto industry influenced the SEC to give Ether and Bitcoin a free pass. Uh, and so she says here, Crypto Law US and John Deaton are cited for this reference. If you scroll down here, uh, Cowboy.Crypto actually posted a response to this. He posted this uh, this tweet thread, a, a long tweet thread, 31 tweets here. I'm not going to go over the full thing but it's basically entitled Coinbase Corruption. This thread will include all my work surrounding the corruption of Coinbase, so Brian Armstrong and Fred Arsam, and their cronies from A16Z, BlackRock, Blackstone, JP Morgan, etc. Spread the word like it is wildfire. So guys, I will link this in the description of the video. Well, I'll link this tweet thread in the description of the video, and if you want to read that, you can, um, you can reference that from this particular Eleanor Turret tweet thread. And as we're closing in on the end of the Ripple SEC lawsuit, some people are coming to the table realizing now Ripple's got some moves to make and are they still being strategic even though they know likely that they have a pretty solid win on the table. The Saint here brought this to our attention. Did we all miss something? Listen to Jeremy Hogan's video. Ripple wants summary on the securities charge but wants jury for the fair notice. I think they aim to put Hinman on the stand to force the courts to bring charges against wrongdoers. And so he says this tweet fits perfectly. This was a Brad Garlinghouse response on Twitter. My outrage has grown as the litigation has unfolded. There is no recourse. There is no consequence to those that brought this lawsuit. The SEC's pursuit of a policy objective isn't about a faithful allegiance to the law. It is about power. So could Ripple now want to actually bring justice to the crypto industry? I mean, it kind of falls in line with what their MO has been from the beginning. They are the big dog in this game. A lot is riding on this particular lawsuit. So could this be why they're uh, potentially looking at this dual prong strategy? So again, Ripple wants summary on the securities charge, but wants jury for the fair notice defense. The Saint goes on to say, think about it. They know their case against the SEC is strong and have even said so. So why else would they want a jury on the fair notice defense? I don't believe it's to force a settlement. I believe Ripple knows they won the case and are pushing for real justice. And just to kind of back that point up too, okay, John Deaton here posting this clip, an interview of him uh, being interviewed by Nick Burafato, aka Mr. BXRP, discussing settlement, the timeline for settlement happening within 90 days. Crypto enthusiast down here just quoting 
the clip. Anyway, I guess I'll just play it for you. So John, taking that into consideration, I know that we recently saw Jeremy Hogan suggest that if there was going to be a settlement, he thought it might happen by the end of the year. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I read somewhere that 90% that of all SEC cases end in the settlement. And if that's correct or not, but, but do you think that that is where we end up? Or do you think this thing is going to go to, to the judge? How do you think this thing ends up? If there was going to be a settlement, it would be from within 90 days of when judge, when they were forced to turn over the documents and so on. My timeline agrees with, with Jeremy Hogan in that sense. Ongoing and future sales of XRP by Ripple and in the secondary market are not secured. That if they don't get that, there's not a settlement. If they get that, there's a settlement within minutes. I mean, I'm paraphrasing Stuart Alderati, but he basically said, on, not to me, to the world, that a settlement happens very quickly if that happens. And if I'm advising Gary Gensler, I'm saying, look, these emails definitely are going to cause issue. We can seal all of this up right now in a settlement. Also, we're really gonna loop, Gary, we're gonna lose. Let's see if Ripple will pay, let's pick a hundred, a hundred million dollars. Let's take that victory. We can narrow it and say that, you know, each crypto is fact and circumstances. And just because XRP is not a security, and that doesn't mean the others aren't. And we can still go after each other one. To me, like I'd be in Gary's ear saying, you can get on TV instead of talking about Kim Kardashian with $1.3 million, dude, you can get up there and say that you held this company responsible. This one of these big FinTech companies, you got a hundred million dollars in addition to the hundred million dollars you got from BlockFi. You're holding these companies accountable. Like you could just spin it politically. You know, you can imagine all the spin masters. It would make us vomit, right? <laughs> Personally, to hear him spin it into a victory. But he could. At the end of the day, isn't the risk greater to them to let it go to a decision and lose than to have to do what you just said and settle and have to spin it? Because they're going to look like winners no matter what. And, and Ripple's going to write a check and Ripple's going to, even when Ripple writes a check, they're going to know that they won as well. I mean, but but would, would you agree that it's a greater risk for the SEC to run it to the end and lose? Absolutely. And, and the, the only answer I can come up with is that he's pushed it this far because he needs a victory. And if he can get a victory he can then say look i was right these cryptos are securities but that's why somebody has got to get into his head and his ear and get, make him pay attention to the fact that they're not gonna win at summary judgment the sec there's no way judge torres is going to grant them summary judgment based on the way they pled the case the xrp affidavits that ripple submitted which is almost three thousand affidavits that talk about non-investment use not knowing who ripple was when they acquired XRP, those are factual issues that a jury could decide if they're gonna go with this theory that every acquisition or purchase of xrp is a security then that means there's no no non-investment utility behind XRP. Well, we all know that's not true. So they're gonna lose and the best they can hope for is the judge says, well, we gotta have a jury trial on certain issues. If you're a politician and you're giving a guaranteed victory, public victory, or your enforcement lawyers are saying, there's like an 80 to 90% chance we're gonna lose Gary. What does the politician do, right? He takes the guaranteed political win. And so that that what makes me think that it should settle. So a lot of reasons there why John Deaton thinks it should settle. Also suggesting that it will happen within 90 days of the documents being turned over. So guys, more and more are we seeing the possibility for settlement becoming a reality within the next few months, 90 days, that's only three months. So anywhere between November, 2022, January 23, we could finally have a verdict in the SEC case, which gets me thinking, I mean, this is why we are already starting to see this kind of pre-settlement pump and why, uh, you know, as I was mentioning earlier with this Michael Branch article, 105 million XRP were just added uh, to accounts recently, likely by Wales Investing, realizing and understanding the most possible outcome for this case. So a lot of good information in here. Wanted to thank John Deaton and Nick Burafato just for posting that. Jesse here asking Jeremy Hogan, thanks for everything, massive help, but I wanted to know, has the judge seen the Hinman emails in their entirety or only portions? If not, then when? 
Jeremy Hogan responding, the judge has or will see all the emails. We just don't know if the judge has seen them yet. So things are heating up. I just hope everyone's prepared and got their XRP bags packed. That's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.